Good morning, my friends. It's Friday, May 3rd, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. Our guest has left the house, so I'm back in my lovely study, which is near the guest room, and I don't want to be here early in the morning when we have guests, so I was out in the kitchen. But I have a painting for you, and I think you may recognize it. This is the Expulsion from Paradise by Masaccio from 1427, and it is extraordinary. The angel has a fierce look of protection, but also joy on its face. And I do believe angels seem mostly genderless as I write about in my book on angels. And below that bright red of the angel are Adam and Eve who seem just distraught and stripped of color, stripped not only of clothing, but of all joy, moving from where there is a branch of green coming through the gate in paradise into this unknown troubled world. Moving into suffering. For the inevitable consequence of the fall is suffering. And when we suffer, we say, why is this happening to me? Because we were designed for Eden. This story is a deep truth, an archetypal truth about who we are and that we long to be back in total harmony with God in paradise. In 2 Thessalonians today, Paul talks about the second coming, our longing to return. Paul was so moved by his experience of the risen Christ that he thought that this second coming was coming immediately. And when he starts birthing these churches, he tells them that it's, it's coming any day now. It's coming right away. And, and then, of course, the years pass. And as they pass, the churches get confused and frustrated and they wonder if they've done something wrong. What? Why isn't the risen Christ coming? Why isn't he coming? Why isn't he fixing everything? Why are we not returning to paradise? And Paul becomes wiser and he begins to realize that it's not up to them, that they're not to try to guess or not to try to make it up to try to see whether this person may be the Satan that is to come, or what he calls the lawless one. Paul says, don't worry. You will know when the end is coming. You will see the destruction and the battle between Satan and the archangel. Don't try to anticipate the end times. Just be faithful to the current moment. And in that moment, you will be told what to do. Everything will be revealed. So Paul himself begins to calm down. Not that he's not always looking for the coming of Christ, as we all should be as people who wait for the Lord. But he realizes that that hyper fixation on what might be coming was not what God wanted. What God was asking for is acute awareness in the moment. Not trying to guess the future, just watching and looking for the one who is to come. Let us pray. Almighty God, we know that you call us home to you, that you call us back to harmony, to paradise, not to Eden, but to the true fulfillment that through Christ, the heavenly city waits for us. But Lord, we we ask that we would live in the present moment and not try to guess about the future or reconstruct the past, but to be grateful for the living moment in which you live with us. We ask you to bless the sick and suffering today, Lord Christ, all over the world and those who are dear to us. I invite you to speak aloud the names of people that you love who need prayers.
bring peace to this troubled world. Bring us a greater awareness of our role on this earth and that to which you call us. Help us to do the work that you give us to do today. Thank you for the beauty of this life, the wonder of love, the gift of our bodies and friends and loved ones. May we seek you in the present moment. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.